The year 2022 is here and I'm sure with it, many of us are looking forward to taking our sim racing performances to the next level. And thankfully, we can get straight into taking steps to make this happen with several significant events in the middle of January, with the Raw before the 24, and of course the actual Daytona 24 in weeks 3 and 4 of the year. So that begs the question, what is the best way to prepare ourselves for these events to maximise our performance on race day? Fortunately, it's not paid software or even some enormous spreadsheet with pitch strategy or fuel targets. It's not some telemetry analyzer and in fact, it's not even feeding you any information at all. Best of all, it's in the game already as standard and is something that way too many people overlook as a training tool despite it being on the sim for over a year now. The answer is the iRacing AI. I have several reasons why I believe this and why I always make sure that I implement AI races into my training program before any major event. So let's get into it. First up is that it provides more validity to the practice data you collect and more accurately portrays the track conditions you will face on race day. In endurance races, there is usually at least 30 to 40 cars on track at once. This means the track will dynamically rubber in as the race goes on, with cars continuously laying down rubber for hours at a time. Let's say that a stint in the race is 30 laps long until you need to pit for fuel and that there are 40 cars on track in total. If you're testing in a solo session all by yourself, by the end of your lonely practice stint, the track will have, you guessed it, 30 laps of rubber laid down on the circuit. On the flip side, if you decide to do your practice stint with the iRacing AI, with 39 rival opponents on track to replicate the race conditions, by the end of your practice stint, the track will have over 1200 laps of rubber laid down onto the track. When you put it this way, it's not hard to see how your tyre wear, fuel numbers or even your outright pace can be wildly different compared to if you are practicing all by yourself. Worst of all, the data you have collected regarding single stints, double stints or even triple stints on the tyres may prove wildly wrong when you get into the race session. How many times have you done the first stint in a race and all of a sudden look down at your tyres and realise, damn, we have a lot more grip than we initially expected. To add to this, an oversteery setup when testing by yourself may seem way too unstable to race with the car proving unpredictable as the fuel load wears off. Suppose you had tested that exact same setup with AI. The added grip that gets laid onto the circuit throughout the stint by the extra cars circulating might just be enough to balance the instability out. The oversteering setup could become usable again and not so scary to drive. Sure, there is an argument that there are fewer distractions in solo testing with no other cars to worry about, but at the end of the day you're not going to get that luxury in the race session as you will likely be constantly swamped by other cars, especially in multi-class sessions. One of the most race-defining factors in many endurance events is the multi-class traffic where cars from all ranges of speeds interact with one another on the track. Holding up the faster cars and compromising the slower cars too, with the iRacing AI you open up a world of experimentation to see what works and what doesn't when it comes to traffic. You can trial if staying tight to the inside of the corner to force the faster cars to go around the outside if it's preferable or if it's more beneficial to let the quick cars go before you even reach the braking zone by lifting off and saving a tiny bit of fuel in the process. With the iRacing AI, you get the perfect training ground to see what works and what doesn't work without ruining someone's annual event, regardless of your skill level. The AI has an adjustable slider for how quick they are, which means you can constantly build up the competition level to continuously push you to get faster. I'm not the fastest driver in iRacing by any means, but even with 7,000 i rating, I find myself struggling to keep up with the AI when set to 125% difficulty, so there is absolutely a difficulty out there for everybody of all skill ranges. From there, you can reference off of the AI to see what they're doing differently to you. Whether this is brake markers, cornering speeds and gears, or even just little setup cues you might be able to pick up on. You might notice they hold way quicker on the straights than you, so maybe lowering the rear wing on your setup is needed to stay competitive. These little details are things you just would not get in a solo practice session. 
And finally, with AI allowing you to do practice races as often as you would like, you're given the opportunity to rehearse several race scenarios that aren't possible in a private test session. You can test all the tiny 1% difference makers that most people usually just hope for the best with. Most endurance events use a rolling start and each track has a unique starting point where the race goes green flag conditions. By constantly doing these races, you will eventually figure out where the starting zone is and be able to get a huge jump on your competitors who haven't rehearsed this. On the flip side, if the event is a standing start, you can practice yourself in different grid positions and work out break markers for turn 1 from the grid start for both the left and right sides of the track so you can gain some early spots from those unsure on how late they can break into turn 1. Even training your reaction time and start procedure to get a proper race start sequence with the lights coming on. Some tracks have little bumps or different grip levels on each grid slot, so you never know when you might encounter something that gives you an advantage over your competitors. The iRacing AI is a badly underutilized tool for drivers of all skill ranges. The constant development work iRacing is putting into this side of the server shows a commitment to make this a long-term feature, not just a lazy gimmick. So while iRacing continues to push to make this a key feature of the sim, you should be pushing hard to make it a key feature in your training program to make sure you are always one step ahead of your competition in 2022.